Good morning, church. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> um, hey, man, let's settle down. You're in God's presence, and we'll have plenty of time to chat after us, you know, fellowship, and give our attention to the Lord for these few minutes, um, several minutes. <laughs> uh, I have a scripture the Lord gave me here in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. It says, um, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, the <coughs> New Living Translation says, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So you're welcome in God's presence. You're welcome in the house of God today. Be encouraged today. If you've come in here discouraged, you're going to go out encouraged. Amen. Believe that. And um, I commend you today for coming to worship God today. Um, there's some that have neglected coming, maybe genuine reasons, and that's okay, but the scripture says, let us not get into a habit, meaning it's, it's actually, it's common, it's easy to get into a habit of not coming to church, yeah? Once you don't come the first week and then not the second, it's like, ah, I'll stay in bed. It's easy. The scripture says you can get in the habit of doing it, but I, I commend you today and thank you for coming, Amen giving your time to the Lord and God will meet you where you are yeah reach out in faith to him and enjoy his presence and expect him to touch you amen expectation that's what faith is so praise God thank you Lord worship and praise you Lord ready to give to you worship and to receive from you Lord we bless you this morning Lord we say come Lord we believe you're here Lord but we want you to presence yourself in a tangible way Lord in our midst Lord
your shadow Joyfully, I lift my voice in 
church today, yeah? I came to church to have a good time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, when you're in this atmosphere, you can't just. You can't just. Hallelujah. 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 Another one. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I know we weren't finished, but we'll put it on pause. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we'll worship again. It's hard to stop, isn't it? I know. It's hard to slip into a different mode, but yeah, our God reigns. Yeah. Amen. He's on the throne this morning. Amen. Jesus is on the throne. Woo! The Bible tells us in Him there is no variation or shadow of turning. Hallelujah. He is the Lord God, and he doesn't change. Yes. He doesn't change. And you know what it says? We love him, and we sing about that, and we do love him. Do you know the reason why we love him? Because he first loved us. That's why we love him. It's all about him and his love for us. It's all about him expressing that through the cross, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He, ex he demonstrated his own love towards us. That's the only reason, and that's the only way we can love him back. Amen. Praise God. Praise. And it's great to be family. Woo. It's great to be in God's family. And we're brothers and sisters this morning. And we have um, Lakin is going to, where is he? <laughs> it's hard to know where Lakin is. He's behind the drums at one minute. <laughs> But Lakin serves as an elder in this church, so it's great to have him bringing the word this morning. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lake. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. Book of Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, 
Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Verse 30, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And they took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 <clears throat> verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God raise. Hallelujah. In the past few weeks, we have had Pastor Andy preaching about faith. This morning, the Lord is saying to us that your worship is faith. Your worship to God is faith. The two apostles, the backstory of Paul and Silas, apostles of Jesus Christ, doing the work of the Lord, they were reported, brought to the courts, sent to prison, they were beaten and then sent to prison. And while they were in the prison, in their pains, try and imagine being beaten, your clothes are shredded and all that pain and being thrown in a cell. That's where they were. Their situation was, was there. They were, they were in pain, they were in agony. And they don't even know what's going to happen. Because the following day, they could be brought out and say they are going to be killed. But from verse 25 it says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. In their predicament, in their uncertainty, not knowing what's the worst thing that's going to happen to them. They decided to sing praises and hymns to God. They were singing, Hallelujah, our God reigns. They were praising God in a very difficult situation. At midnight. And what is midnight? Why midnight? Why didn't they start half 11. Why did they start at 10 p.m.? Why at midnight, of all the troubles they've had in the day, being arrested, being brought to court, being beaten, being dragged into the prison, why didn't they start singing right in front of the judges? It says, but at midnight. Lamentations chapter 3, 
verse 22 to 23. Let's quickly read that. Lamentations 3 from 22. It says, though the lost mercies and though the lost mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Verse 23. It says what? They are new every morning. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's a new day. They are new every morning. These two guys have endured a very hard day. But at midnight, that is the end of the day. So what did they do? They start the following day with God. They say, we, we don't care what happens to us. All that, we've survived. They were, these guys are ready for something new. They've made it past the 24 hours. They know it's midnight. They can still stand. They are full of hope. They're like, okay, what's next? Bring it on. And they started their day with God. Praising God. Singing hymns. Praying. What is praying? Prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. Just the way we talk to each other, conversation, talking and listening back, that is what prayer is. So they woke up in the morning and they started their day with God. And funny enough, they were not saying, God, uh, what's going to happen? How are we going to get out of here? They were just thanking God. They were just giving praise. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 18 to 28. Psalm 22, verse 3. I don't know where Habakkuk is. Old Testament. I can I read from verse 17. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the, on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no fruit, though the flock may not be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stores. It's like, <clears throat> though there's nothing, no money, no security, take away everything, you know, that's all. Your harvest, everything is gone. But in verse year 18, it says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Your worship to God is faith. You're giving glory to God despite everything is faith. Moving on. Still on that first verse, it says, and the priest, the, the B part, say, and the prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners. They were not the only prisoners in the prison at that time. So at midnight, all the prisoners were awoken by the sounds of these two crazy men who just started singing. First thing, at midnight, they were listening. 
they were heard. The question is, do you know people are listening to you? When you worship God, there are people listening. When you praise God, despite your predicaments, there are people listening. There are people watching. Waiting to see what's this crazy person up to. Why are you still joyful despite everything? So it's very important that we praise God. It's very important that you worship God. Because while you are worshiping God, your focus is on God. Your worship is doing something that you are not even aware of. Hallelujah. So they were heard. If you want to read Romans 1.16. But moving on swiftly, it says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Suddenly, all of a sudden, the foundations of the prison were shaken. The doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. It didn't say just Paul and Silas' chains. Everyone's chains were loosed. So just because those prisoners were listening, their chains were loosed as well. Just because they were listening and they didn't even see them because they're in different cells. But just from hearing them, then the Bible says, suddenly there was an earthquake. I think there's been an earthquake this morning. Yes. I knew there was an earthquake this morning. When I got to verse 27, as an African man, my mind was like, ah, there's something missing. You're a prisoner. You're in chains. But you believe in God and all of a sudden your chains were loosed. The prison doors were opened. Thank you. That's, she, know, she gets it. Patience gets it. There's a saying in my language, it says, Enyori yo odile. Literally, I'm going to try and translate that. As an African, before you can say, if something happened before you can say, Enyori that God, before you can say, God save me, you have to be in your house. That means you need to take, if you're not yet in your house, anything can still happen to you. So it's only you have to run, <laughs> run as fast as possible. Until you get into your house and then you can say, oh, thank God. <laughs> we don't thank God on why we're running. Say, you know, because you believe anything. Can I'm like, why didn't they get out of that place? Because that would be what I probably will do. If my chains were loose and everything was up, I'll get out of there as fast as I can. But it wasn't the case. So, like, what must be going on in the head of these people at that time? Because I would think all their prayer, when they were praising God, is God, God, get us out of here. Get us out of this situation. Save our lives. Preserve us. I will assume that's what they were praying for. But then the earthquake came and the doors opened. And nobody, they were still there. Verse 27, and the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled. 
which should have been the normal thing. That's a natural man. That's the guy that gets it. In a sense, in a, you know, in the normal human being sense, he gets it. He was like, of course, they're gone. The doors are open. That's the normal thing that they would have done. So he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. A lot has happened over the world in the past two years. Suddenly. Twenty twenty was a suddenly year. The foundation of the world was shaken. A lot of unexpected things have happened, things you couldn't even imagine. And this guy, like many others, a reaction to what has happened, to what they see on the news, looking at their bank accounts, crashed economy, unemployment, depression has set in, and unfortunately, a lot of people have taken their lives. A lot of people have committed suicide. Because when they look at things, that's all they see. That's all they hear and that's all they see. They just conclude that all this confusion and all, well, it's better off. There's no way out. Just like this soldier. Because in his head, that's the end, not just of his career. That's the end of his life. So he decided, well, they're going to kill me because there's no way out. There's no way for me to explain that. I can't get out of this. I cannot get out of this. My life is over. I might as well just take it myself. Because he couldn't see any better. And why did he miss all that? He was asleep. I don't know what kind of sleep you'll be in to miss an earthquake. <laughs> Must have been, a, you know. But it does happen, unfortunately. Unfortunately, a lot of us have been sleeping. If all we see in the world is the bad, if all we see is the problem, if all we see is the hardship, if all we see is the poverty, the unemployment, we are sleeping. Just like this guy. Verse 28. But Paul... I love that. I wish he said, but liquor. <laughs> you know. And the Lord was, I said, God, I like this, but liquor. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Paul called out with a loud voice. Paul wasn't silent. Paul wasn't whispering. Paul called out with a loud voice to get his attention. Say, wake up, man. You're not alone. We are all here. Same situation. We are all here. There's a lot of people who need to hear that from us. 
we are all in the same boat. Because the enemy has captured this guy to think that he's all alone. He's been overwhelmed by his own situation. All he's thinking about himself. And that's why he was making that awful decision to take his life. But Paul says, snap out of it. We are all here. What an amazing awakening to know that you are not alone. So we need to speak up. We need to be but part. But John. But David. We need to be that loud voice. To let people know that they're not alone. Praise God. Moving on. Verse 29. There's so much in this scripture. Then he called for a light. Hallelujah. The man that could not see, but he's been told that we're all here. No need to think that you're alone. But he said, mm, I still don't see it. So he called for a light. What is the light? We are the light. Has someone been calling for you to shine a light on the situation? We need to be the light. Because there are people who couldn't see. Despite that, we can see. We know the reality from what it looks like is different. But there are still some people who still don't get it. They will need the light. And we need to be that light. If you read Matthew 5, 14 to 16, talks about we are the light of the world. No one lights a light and put it under a bushel. But your light is meant to shine so that all can see. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. Oh, so they said, verse 31. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. That is the solution that we need to bring to the world. If you're not saved, if you can't see spiritually, if you can't get an understanding of what's going on, Jesus is the answer. It's very simple. John 3.16 is very simple. Moving on quickly to verse 34. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them. And the next thought says, and he rejoiced. Having believed in God with all his household. Hallelujah. This was a man who was trembling. This was a man who was ready to kill himself. But when he had the word of God, 
after he's been ministered to, Bible said he rejoiced. So he wasn't no longer trembling. He wasn't worried about his job anymore. He wasn't worried what the authorities would do to him afterwards. All that doesn't bother him anymore. He started rejoicing. Can you see how the circle? Just because two guys decided to start their day singing and praising God. And he too started rejoicing, singing hallelujah. And then his household joined him. And you can imagine how many people their household will influence. Because they will look at him and say, I, what's going on with you? You went to work normal, you came back, and now you're singing all these songs and praising this God that we don't know about. And then he too will tell them. And it's how so, and that's how we begin. So, having believed in God, so he became a believer. Faith came into his heart. Faith came into his household. Your worship is faith. Anytime we give glory to God, faith is rising up in your heart. Anytime you speak about God, you speak about the goodness of God, not just when it's good for you, but because we know that God is good. We are building our faith. And as we do that, people are listening. And we begin to affect people's lives. Praise God. Amen. There's so much, so much here. But let's, I'm going to round up shortly. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.13. I want to read that. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Second Corinthians 4, chapter 13. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, Amen? Amen? And since we have the same spirit of faith, we all have the same spirit of faith. It doesn't matter where you are with God. You have that spirit of faith. He said, according to what is written, I believed... And therefore, I spoke. I believe, and therefore, I spoke. What do you believe? Do you believe in God this morning? If you believe in God, you need to speak about it. You need to sing about it. You need to shout about it. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. There is power in your praise. There is power in your worship. It's not just about you. It's about God. And when you give that to God, you will see God move. Do we know God do move? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Do we know God moves? Yes. Amen. Because you, sometimes you read the Bible, God says he sits on the throne, but he does move. <laughs> He's not just sitting there all the time. Amen? <laughs> the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. 
to inhabit King James Version, as old as it is, sometimes I like that old translation. You say, it dwells. God dwells. So if it dwells, that means God, it can get up from the throne. When you start to praise God, you move God. And when God moves, there is going to be an earthquake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. When God moved, the foundations of your prison will be shaken. Yeah. When God moves, your chains will be loosed. Yeah. And all you have to do is have faith. To have faith, to have that same spirit of faith. You have to know who God is. Because it's a spirit. God is a spirit. And it's only that spirit that can connect to God. So if you're here this morning and you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't have that personal relationship, this faith that we're talking about, this is where it starts. The guy says, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And not just only you, you and your household will be saved. Let's bow our heads this morning. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm very confident that God knows. I'm very confident that God knows where he knows what you're going through. He knows the level where you are. He knows the pain that you're going through. And this morning, as you praise, this morning, as you sing your hymns unto God, your foundations will be shaken and your chains will be loosed. So the first call I'm going to make, if you want to get to know this Lord Jesus, if you want to be saved, if you don't want to be controlled by all that is going on in the world and what you hear in the news, if you're not living your life according to what you're being told, you want to have a life that is full of joy, full of laughter, of dancing and singing. You need to be saved. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. While all is bowed in prayer. While every other person is speaking to God at this moment. Because this is a new day. It doesn't matter what has happened up to the point that you're here. His mercies are new every day. You can start afresh with God right now. If you want to have a relationship with God, you want to have a chance to get to know Jesus, quickly just, just raise your hands. Just lift up your hands. If you want Jesus, thank you. Just lift it up. Hallelujah. You want to have that relationship. You want to have a reason to sing in the face of pain. You want to have a reason to be able to be full of joy in the midst of your trouble. Hallelujah. Just speak to God. Those of you that have your hands up, just 
Talk to God this morning. That's what prayer is. Just talking. There is God within you. Just tell him I want to get to know you, Jesus. Tell him I want to have a reason to be joyful at the start of every day. I want to have a reason to be able to wake up every day and say, praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you for this, your children, Lord. I thank you for a day like this. For your word said, today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. We just praise you for our love for this, your children. Just pray that faith will start to boil from within. As they've been drawing water, that the, the rivers of life begin to overflow from within. Even the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. That a new life of God will begin to flow from within you. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for dying for them. Thank you for paying the ultimate price on the cross for them. Even as they have answered you this morning, Lord. I pray you begin to reveal your servant to them. Because you are the good shepherd. And they've come back to you, Lord. You put a ring on their finger and clothe them with righteousness. And begin to walk with them. In Jesus' name. For the rest of us, if you have a reason to praise God this morning, just rise up on your feet. If you want to do business with God this morning, just rise up and just open your hearts, open your, open your mouth and just speak with your God. Raise your voice unto the heavens. Do business with God. Let the Lord set you free. Where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks, Lakin. Praise God. That was an excellent word. Amen. It's a powerful, powerful lesson for us to learn. Very, very powerful and a very important key that in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of our struggles or trials, whatever they may be, that we learn to praise God. Sounds simple, don't it? but very powerful and you see the ripple effect of everything else that can happen that when we learn to count it all joy in various trials amen I know that and I've heard that I've preached that but when the trial comes do I do that <laughs> and that's the, the lesson just learning that so let's be reminded amen that in the midst of those trials that come those difficulties that we're able to lift up our hands and just begin to praise God. So let's just do it this morning. Whatever you're facing, you might be in the midst of a storm. You might be in the midst of the greatest storm in your life. Just begin to praise God. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're in the most beautiful time of your life. Let's just finish and let's just worship him this morning. Amen. Praise God.
linger a little bit longer unless you have to really go I encourage you let's practice what we've just heard worship God I love 